Senator, it's Jeff Greenfield. That's that's a that's a metaphor we don't usually use where I came from in New York, but I'll take your point. So let I'm me. I'm a country boy. I, I understand, Senator. Yes, and that's when you reach for your wallet. That's right. Now, let's cut. Let's cut to the chase. Witnesses aren't going to appear out of nowhere in a Perry Mason uh, moment to change anybody's minds. So if I were willing to bet my farm, if I had a farm, that on Monday you will vote to dismiss, how wrong would I be? Well, I'm not going to even say I'm going to vote to all. all I have taken an oath. I take that oath very strongly. I'll wait till I get all the arguments in. I've made it very clear to my staff, to everybody else, that I'm here as a senator, not as a representative of the House of Representatives or the White House. Yes, I know, Senator, but if you forgive me, the, based on what you've just said, that there are no witnesses that are going to change anything, and your own s sense of what you've already said about what the standards for removal are, why wouldn't it be fair for someone like me to conclude that well, you know think, there's not a case here? I think that what we're going to see is senators coming together at the end of this, and we're going to have to ask ourselves very honestly, do we need witnesses? Does that really add anything to it, or does it just add time in a case that uh, most of the country wants us to wrap up one way or the other, either vote for the president or vote against the president, but wrap it up? So you felt pretty good when Charles Ruff was making the point about Vernon Jordan and some of his prior testimony, and he said, do you really need to call this man here and look him in the eye for that? Well, I wonder how anybody's going to look him in the eye when you get a Senate chamber of 100 with a, certainly the people in the back row. Maybe some of us are more senior in the front rows, might, but in the back rows, you're not even going to be able to see the witness. But the point is... I don't know what, after all the grand jury appearances, all the depositions have been taken, all the FBI interviews, what you add by bringing in witnesses other than an uh, extreme amount of time. Now, if we don't care if we tie up the Senate for two or three or four or five months and the country, well, then have all the witnesses you want. But I think that that's what happens. If you, if you want a lot of witnesses, then you're going to stretch this thing out much, much, much longer than it's been. And I think much longer the American people, whether they're for President Clinton or against President Clinton, want. Senator Patrick Lay of Thank Vermont, you. thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. Good to have you. We'll be right back with more of our post-trial coverage this afternoon. I always liked building things. I built my first skyscraper when I was seven. Today what I want to build most is a secure future for my son. So I took a few steps and called T. Roll Price, the no-load mutual fund people. They have all these planning kits. You see, I prefer to do my own investing. Look, I've always been good with kits, even really big ones. For over 50 years, we've been helping people invest with confidence. T. Roll Price. Sports sedan that sets a new standard of performance. And a touring sedan that sets a new standard of luxury. Here they are. Introducing the new TL from Acura. Mortgage interest rates have been slashed to some of their lowest levels ever. The time to refinance is right now. Just call Ditech Funding at 1-800-71-FIXED. Today's low 30-year fixed rate is just 6 and 5 eighths percent. APR 6.877 percent. There are no points, no deposits, and rates will never go down to zero. So what are you waiting for? It's smart financing from Ditech Funding. Refinance now to a low 30-year fixed rate of just 6 and 5 eighths percent with zero points. Call 1-800-71-FIXED. Tweety, I really don't think you guys are relatives. I do. MCI Five Cent Sundays helps me keep up with my Space Jam buddies. He doesn't even have feathers. But we have the same last name. It's just five cents a minute. Every minute, every Sunday, along with low rates all week long. But just because he's Larry Bird and you're Tweety Bird doesn't mean you're related. I don't know. We work an awful lot alike. Call 1-800-SUNDAYS to become an MCI customer. It's been about 50 minutes since Charles Ruff, the president's chief legal counsel, wrapped up his uh, presentation before members of the United States Senate today. Uh, we've been listening to some Senate reaction uh, to what Mr. Ruff had to say, and frankly, so far, Jeff Greenfield, 
uh, and Michael Gerhardt, who are here with Bernie and me. The reaction has fallen pretty much along, I have to say, pretty predictable partisan lines. Now, these are the ones who are willing to come to the cameras and tell us what they think, but that's what they're saying. That's a really important point, though, that, that we hear these people because they're the, the jurors, and that's fine. But, but there's an old rule in consp you know, that those who know don't say and those who say don't know. If there are any Democrats who have doubts about their president, they're not the ones who are going before the camera. There's one other point I think worth making that for all of us who are not good lawyers, or in my case, any lawyer. When you hear two and a half hours of a highly skilled presentation, you are likely to be impressed. And this was an impressive presentation. But, no, but there are aspects of, of what Mr. Ruff said today that also reveal where the president's weaknesses are. For instance, in the grand jury, the president said, well, when I talked to Betty Curry, I was only trying to refresh my recollection. That's going to be a very hard sell, I think, even for the president's partisans. We were never alone together, right? So he really didn't deal with that part. And, and you can see that he's most comfortable arguing that, that, that what the president did was basically an attempt to hide an embarrassing situation. And where the White House case is least comfortable is whether or not there's evidence indicating an obstruction uh, involving Betty Curry. But you, did, but you did, Jeff, have Charles Ruff saying Betty Curry herself on several occasions said, when asked, she didn't feel pressured by the president. Absolutely. And my feeling is when we get to the question period or, or when the deliberations come about witnesses, what the Republicans are going to say is, well, she said that, but her testimony about what the president told her may suggest otherwise the only way to resolve that is get her here um, but as I say I'm trying to suggest to you where the Republicans find they may have some some counterattack in the wake of what was an impressive performance I, I would also just remind you uh, something that Mr. Ruff said at the outset of his um, presentation that is he's not there he was not here today to in fact answer every conceivable uh, argument he in fact was making an, a, a presentation that was designed to provide an overview we've got several more lawyers coming forward that are going to give more detailed argumentation regarding specific pieces of evidence uh, a second thing I might just provide is an uh, overview myself uh, and that is I think it's interesting to note that both sides have said that the other side's case is weak. It's sort of an interesting how each thinks the other side's case is weak, which is, uh, I think, going to lead us uh, to a point where each basically is going to cancel the other out, and that's going to lead to witnesses. But I think the very fact that we've got one side, I mean, each side thinking the other side's case is weak, I think is going to end up in a situation where uh, senators are going to divide pretty much down the middle, and that's going to mean we won't get a conviction. Did you get the impression everyone here at the table that the bottom line on all this, these three days of the full court press by the president's lawyers, is that regardless of what you think of what this man did in his private behavior, it does not rise to the level that he should be expelled from office. That to me was, was the most, I'm story. sorry. That, that, was, that was a major part of That was story. so important, as, and it's really been, been a kind of undercurrent through the last several days where people are, are now saying, and, uh, even if you think you could remove the president, even if it was acceptable, this is what Russ said at the end of his presentation, you really only could do this if you're, if you're faithful to the framers, if you think there's no other remedy. Basically, the subtext of that is censure the guy, don't remove him. It's important to, to keep in mind that this isn't just any kind of trial. We're looking at an, an incredibly unusual event, uh, a special kind of political proceeding in which the uh, senators are entrusted with discretion. And that discretion is, um, is everything in this particular case. They can think the president might have done something wrong, even impeachable, but they don't have to convict. That's right. And they, as we keep hearing the argument made over and over again, uh, a judge is appointed for life. If he does something egregious, he or she does something egregious, the, the one way you get rid of them is to impeach them. A president elected, his term is out in two years. Do you really want to subvert the will of the American And notice the response uh, from the, one of the Republicans. Do you want a lower standard of integrity mm. yeah. for a president than a judge? And it, it, to me, though, it's yeah. really fascinating. And, and you, you think about, you, it, it makes sense under some circumstances for a senator to say, I think the guy's guilty, but I'm not going to remove him. Quick example. Suppose you had a president who's vice president was widely regarded as incapable of, of advancing to the presidency. We've had such situations in the past. You could see a senator saying, I think the guy, this president, did something impeachable, but I don't want to take the chance of removing him because it puts an unqualified person in his place. That's not the situation now I'm suggesting. Not yeah. suggesting. But you can see where other factors could weigh into a senator's mind other than the simple guilt or innocence. One of the senators who listened to uh, Charles Ruff today is talking with reporters now. He's Oklahoma Limited Republican Don Nichols. People under a few circumstances make the tax code a lot more more complicated, a lot more inequitable in, in many relations, in, in many ways. And so we think if we have a surplus, we should put taxpayers at the 
front of the line. If they're paying too much, they should be able to keep more of their own money, uh, not send it to Washington, D.C., and hope that they'll get it back under some special new gimmick that uh, the president proposed. Are you upset that there were not tax cuts, across the board tax cuts in the president's plan? Well, I, obviously, I think he just decided that uh, government, it, it, there's a little contest going on. Republicans favor taxpayers, and, and President Clinton favor, favors government. And if you look at the, the contest and Bill Clinton's proposal tonight, under President Clinton's proposal tonight, government grows. Government grows in every uh, way imaginable. And uh, frankly, I don't think that's going to happen. It, it will, we're happy to receive this proposal, uh, but we're going to move forward on our agenda, and our agenda is going to include economic opportunity uh, for all Americans, and that's going to include a tax cut. Senator, Thank you. Republican uh, Senator Don Nichols of Oklahoma, one of the Republicans in the leadership in the Senate making uh, the argument, uh, as we hear from many other Republicans, that this president doesn't want to cut taxes enough. Republicans this year proposing a significant rate cut in taxes, and as far as we know, that is not what President Clinton is going to be talking about tonight. CNN will be covering uh, the president's address uh, to the, state, to the, to the uh, joint uh, session of Congress tonight at 9 o'clock. Our coverage will begin at 8. Uh, and at 9 o'clock, the president uh, will enter the House chamber, uh, and we expect that address will go on for a little more than an hour. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. Tonight, Bill Clinton gives his State of the Union address. Will his speech impact the impeachment trial and the future of his presidency? The State of the Union address, tonight on CNN. Sports guy Brian Collard's on a mission for the Home Shopping Network. Do you know where the NFL Players Party is? Players Party? To get to the NFL Players Party and present the hottest Super Bowl merchandise and collectibles. I know it's around here someplace. Does anybody know where to find the You'll find the action on the Home Shopping Network live from Miami immediately after the Super Bowl with a sneak preview January 30th at 10 p.m. Eastern. Where is everybody? What do you mean I'm early? Here's Edward Asner. Our community is troubled. You feel the effects of crime and poverty. You support the idea of making a community better through work, not welfare. You believe that jobs reduce poverty and homelessness. We believe it too. We're Goodwill Industries. We train people with disabilities and those with other barriers to employment. Like you, Goodwill Industries believes in the power of work. Reaction to the State of the Union on Larry King Live tonight. With a home loan from Superior Bank, you can consolidate high interest debt into one lower monthly payment. We went from six payments to one. We were able to consolidate our credit card debt into one lower monthly payment. I was able to drop about five payments a month. It's great to have money left over every month. Even if your credit is less than perfect, call Superior Bank now at 1-888-678-7777. Thank, Thank you, Superior. The new Acura RL has distinctive styling to appeal to your elegant side. A performance tune suspension to satisfy your assertive side and a sophisticated front and side airbag system to protect both sides. The new RL from Acura. Senator Tom Harkin, Democrat from Iowa, joins us now. Senator, we saw you a short time ago when you came outside and you said that uh, Charles Ruff poked a hole the size of a barn door in the prosecution's case. Specifically, what evidence were you talking about? Well, as he took, uh, Bernie, as he took uh, the perjury charges and broke them down bit by bit, you could see that the sort of house of cards that the prosecution built up last week simply didn't hold. But I thought the most powerful argument he made was when he dissected what happened on December the 11th. I've talked to a lot of senators who simply did not know, for example, that the judge's order came down late at night, that Vernon Jordan was on a plane to Europe. Uh, we didn't know all this, and we're wondering now why the prosecution kept that from us. But do you don't believe that the White House knew that she would likely be a witness? 
Well, what I'm saying before is... Before the judge's order came down at 5 o'clock or shortly thereafter? No, but the House managers built their strong case on the fact that Vernon Jordan was helping her get this job because on that day they found out that she was going to be a witness.